Since the first video, I thought I'd do a part two because it didn't really go into any detail on how to style these things. And that's pretty important, I think. So, um, in part one of this video, I covered how to create a very basic waffle chart using linked images. So here I've expanded on it just because I didn't feel like it really covered um, enough detail in the last video. It got you started, but it didn't really show you the power of what you can do with linked images. So what I've done here is I've, I've made three scripts, essentially, to um, allow you to run this yourself on any worksheet. So if you select a cell with a percentage in there and go run, it will create a chart based on that, fine. And what it's also doing, which you can't see here, it's pulling in the cell above as the title, and that is dynamic. So if I just change this to F9, there you go. Now this um, updates pretty quickly. So, and again, if I run this, Alt F8, run the script, so waffle create. And I should also mention what this does is it takes the color of the cell you've selected and uses that as a source for the color for the chart itself. So if I do it again, Alt F8, waffle create. And then, here we go, that's our third chart. And all of these are um, dynamic. So just quickly change these titles here, like so, and the amounts, they all change. Okay, fantastic. But uh, saying, okay, this, this is fine, but it still doesn't look very interesting. But one, one good thing about these is, because it's all, um, this is treated as an image by Excel, we can actually go into the picture formats here and you can just pick one right off the bat here like this and already you've got kind of like a pseudo 3D thing you can set the um, curvature of the uh, the edges there um, yeah there's a bunch there's a bunch of like ready made sort of 3D looking things or um, you can go into the right click context menu Format picture, and then in here you can set stuff like the 3D rotation. You can set the well, I can do that from from a preset. Um, you can also set the bell, uh, the depth, so you can actually extrude this a bit to give it a bit more chunkiness. And uh, the contour is just the lines. I don't really know what you'd why you'd be messing with that, but. Um, this is interesting. You can set the material effect. So if you're putting it on top of things, or uh, let me see, uh, let's add a bevel. The translucent one is quite interesting. So you can, that's almost completely translucent, which isn't really helpful. Um, let's try that one. Yeah. So yeah, there's, there's stuff you can do just to um, immediately get a pretty cool looking uh, effect off the bat. But the other thing you can do, because this is again a linked image, there's nothing stopping you. Um, and if I do Alt F8 again, what I've done is I've created a script here called Waffle Data. And if I execute that, that will take you into the source charts where the magic happens. So. What you can do on here is, for example, this whole chart is built from conditional formatting. So here, if you want to, we can go to Manage Rules, Edit Rule, and let's just change the color here. So I want a more punchy green. Uh, to make this consistent, I change the fonts and the fill color, like so. There we go. And let's say I don't like the uh, borders here, so I'm going to go no borders. And what I might do is insert a gradient. So I'm going to say insert a square like so. 
get rid of the oh that's to gradient fill like so oh I don't want an outline and let's just go in here and let's change the the fill to a linear and I want this to be green make that also green transparent let's make this a slightly darker green like so also transparent and let's set the angle to 90 degrees so if I overlay this now like so let's make it a bit less subtle and I go back to so now you can see I have a, I, I go a subtle uh, gradient here. Um, also, I can I can do. Let's see what I can do. What can I do? I can do. Let's make these a different color. Let's make these black, and then the font the same color. And I'll do another gradient up here so control D to copy and I just do that like so and if I go back like here there you go that's oops and then finally I want to change this so uh, I'm gonna do a gradient fill again but this time make it solid And I want to make this text a bit cooler. So I'm going to change this to a white font. And I'm going to add a shadow. And I might make this a bit bigger. Make the shadow a bit blurrier. Oops. Maybe I wouldn't use the reflection. Um, one thing, yes, yeah, so I think I mentioned it before. If you want to set the range that the uh, this image pulls through, you can just edit like you would a normal range reference in the formula bar here. And there's one small problem with these uh, links pictures is um, sometimes you'll get uh, the edges don't quite line up as you can see here so uh, the way to resolve that is oh, let's just make sure these are all the same so that's black that's black uh, let's just bring the front on that one so what you can do, what I normally do if I want to try and keep things tidy is I'll make another shape, I'll get rid of the fill, no fill, and then the shape outline I'll make this a green, and let's change the weight to like uh, 4 pixels. And then use the Alt key and left mouse button, and hopefully it doesn't open the research tab, which no one ever uses, ever. Um, and drag that in like so. I might just add a. So yeah, that's the thing you can do. Just like you would with the normal picture, you can make it slightly transparent. Um, you can do all kinds of stuff. Really, you could. Uh, let's see. Well, let's do uh, soft edges. Oh yeah, that's better. Okay. So um, yeah, that still works. So again, you can you can duplicate it and then apply different effects all together. So we can go back to our presets here and do a perspective. Um, so yeah, the sky is the limit, I suppose. Uh, one thing I should probably add in here, um, which again I didn't add in the original one, but it's very simple to achieve, and. Uh, and that is adding the the numbers. So if I go ahead and 
insert a uh, word art if we can find it. Where's word art? Oh, here it is. Right, so let's do a big thing here. So let's change this to reference equals my percentage here, like so. Now I'm going to make this big. So I should change the font size back to like uh, 100. And let's go for a uh, sort of a 80s surf vibe. So we'll add add a shadow. We'll change the fill to a gradient fill. Oh no, no, no. Text options gradient gradient fill on the text. So we'll make it orange, white. Blue, like so. Let's make the line pink. Now let's change the, uh, let's do a shadow in red. Blur that. Let's add a reflection. No, let's not add that. Don't worry about that. Let's add some beveling. Let's add some depth. So I'm going to make this uh, green. Make it metal. Let's change it to a warm lighting. Now here comes the magic. We add some 3D rotation. Whoops. This way. Well, zero. that way instead. Uh, let's see, let's make this a bit bigger. Oh, a bit too big. Okay. Might just change that contour color to be yellow. Let's just change this depth color to be blue. That looks a bit nicer. Okay. Should we add some glow as well? And let's just do a solid fill on the shape. A gradient fill, rather. And then we'll do the soften edges thing. And that just blurs it all again. Nicely into the background. So now, as you can see, we've duplicated this and applied a different effect to this one, but they're still all sourced from the same data, um, like so. Um, yeah, there's there's a bit of an issue with Excel updating uh, text uh, stuff. I don't know why that's um, lagging, but if you just hit F9, that gets it to update. So the numbers will update, or the uh, the charts will update, but not the numbers immediately until you hit F9 to then calculate. But uh, that works, I think. So yeah, there's um there's some stuff you can do if you wanted to get really uh. Uh, technical. Let's just do another chart here. Wait for it to load. So what you can do, if you want to get really meta, so we go into the chart like this, and what we can do is we can take our other chart and put it inside the first chart and now we have a chart within the chart we can also change the uh, formats on this if we wanted to 
and so on. So that that's the um, that's the power of linked images that you can do a whole bunch of stuff um, quite easily and uh, effectively simulate the same behavior as a chart, but you control what it does um, through code or um, formulas or whatever. One more thing, if you are, um, if you created way too many charts and you want to start again, you can just do Alt F8, Waffle Clear, and that will remove all the Waffle charts and their associated sheets uh, from, from the workbook. But bear in mind that clears everything away, that deletes the whole lot, but um, that's just something for when you're um, playing around. So this will actually, I should add, this will work in a new workbook. So if I just do a new workbook, do, I don't know, 25%, old F8, and then if I run the uh, create waffle chart here, um, I didn't actually create a title. But yeah, that's... um. Oh, and I should add, if you don't have a background color on your cells, um, let's do, oops, Alt F9, create again. If you don't have a background color, it will just randomize the color of the chart. So um, just so you're aware, just delete that one. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. There's not much more to it. I mean, uh, You can do all kinds of things. Messing around. Um, yeah. So that's your lot. Um, like, subscribe, comment, all that kind of stuff if you uh, found this useful. I will, as usual, provide this whole uh, worksheet and stuff in the. Um, I will put this as a link in the description so you can download and have a play around yourself and uh, enjoy. Yes, that's it for today. Mm -hmm.